the, the reason that we have the parking agreement, if you look at all the spaces for all of the uses and they were full up all the time, we're short a few spaces. Not many, about four or five or six, something like that. The, uh, once we add in the, par the parking for the, in front of the building. But because of the use times of the parking, we don't believe that there's significant problem because the church, again, utilizes it on Sunday. And, for example, Navy credits shut down on Sunday. Um, and for part of the time that the church will be doing services, the store will be the, the, but not all of it. So there will be some conflict there. But that's why the, when we talk to uh, Harbor Freight, they wanted some dedicated parking, which will be the ones, of course, right in front of their store. So this will work out best for everybody. Okay, thank you. So we're I, not this good, uh, sorry. No, no, yeah, go and, and to be very honest with you, if we look at the, uh, if we were looking at pure parking violations relative to the CUP filed by the church, they would be the one in trouble. In trouble. So I have no interest in, in pursuing that unless yeah. you do wish to, to argue with the church about that. That's true. When are they scheduled to open, do you know? Beg your pardon? Oh, yeah, uh, within the next two weeks. Okay. Oh. They are that far along. Thank you. So part of the discussion on the parking and the reason we did a parking agreement as well is is that what we find in the city a, n a number of times is, is we just don't have sufficient parking. So the requirement was for this many, and so we wanted the agreement to be tailored that as, as long as they have the life of that lease, that this is assigned to them. And, and that way we're not acerbating the problem or just a wink and a nod and, and actually requiring uh, dedicated parking. And we're requiring that that, oh, by the way, that the ADA is in there and so on, so we're cleaning that up at the same time because... There's a limited amount of ADA now that wouldn't meet the requirements. So we have a we have an engineering condition that they require the ADA requirement for parking and so on, entrance and all that. Any other comments from the commission? So this is a discussion item. Uh, if, if there's something from the public, if the public would like to make any comments about Harbor Freight, uh, it's not an action item or a public hearing. Mr. Matthews. Yeah, Dave Matthews, address is on file <clears throat> with the city clerk. Um, it's been a while since I've been in that parking lot. Is there an entrance to the parking lot from the north, on the north side? Yes. Yes. Okay. That's what I thought. And I thought as I glanced through some of this material online that they're going to move a loading, the loading dock to the south end of the building? That's correct. Um, okay, that's going to take out some, well, maybe not necessarily. There used to be parking in front of that doorway before, yes. but um, I guess maybe that wouldn't, wouldn't matter too much right now. Um, the other thing that kind of bothers me is that the c city council has to abandon the alley right away is that correct that is correct i believe in the and they haven't done it yet that's correct so what happens if something comes up and they don't so they got a plan two plan b yeah plan b plan b would be to put uh balusters out in front of the front door in a, but the problem with that is that it would partially block block the alleyway so we'd have to give them some access that way Okay. And that would be a safety issue. Yeah. So we, we decided that it would be better to do the alley. We're assuming that if our engineering and planning department supports it, that we hope that the planning that the council will yeah. agree with us and and for safety purposes do that. There's no there's yeah. no uh, you the city's not utilizing that alleyway in any way right now. So yeah, uh, except for sewer and. Well, sewer would still stay there, yes, sir. They'd have, they can't build a building on it, but sewer would be there. And and as far as the signage on the building, did you say that there's going to be a sign on Balsam Street as, as no, well? No, there's no sign on Balsam Street as presented. There is a sign on the front of the building which faces China Lake Boulevard. And there is a sign that's a pole sign that, that's there now. You see Lindsay Furniture. That will, those panels will be replaced to show oh, okay. Harbor Freight. Okay. Yeah, they're orienting the total building towards 
uh, China Lake. We had some several conversations about that because yeah. we have an interest as a city to have balsam be improved, but unfortunately, um, they are n they were not interested in balsam's traffic. They were only interested in China Lake's traffic. The other thing I'm I'm looking at is I don't know how big their their delivery trucks would be, but I hope in the parking lot striping that they make access for them. I'm assuming they're going to come in off of Balsam Street. I would, too. Uh, if they're going to be exiting, then probably either on China Lake or the one to the north, whatever that is. So I hope they make plenty of provision for the big trucks to get out of there as well. Yeah, we did talk to them about that, and they said they have the room for it. So. Any other public comment? Thank you. Thank you. Moving uh, forward, uh, we'll move into 10A, abatement of public hearing pursuant to the Ridgecrest Municipal Code 4-15, 104 of, the prop uh, of property at 215 West Panamint Avenue, APN-067-150-24. Turn the time over to staff. Good evening. Uh, this is, as stated, an abatement for 215 West Panaman Avenue. Current property owner listed is Maria Del Carmen Melgar, who is deceased. Current address, 215 West Panaman Avenue. The uh, property was signed over by the deceased husband to Edu A. Henriquez, also at the same address. RMC violation is 4-15101C1, which is accumulation of debris, junk, garbage, or refuse. In this investigation, I'm going to be discussing. It's going to uh, be rather lengthy, but I think you need to know the background of the history of this particular property, considering what's been going on. Okay. There have been three previous cases on this property prior to the current one. Case 123078 opened September 24, 2012. Case 142271 opened July 10, 2014. Case 143051 opened September 9, 2014, and the current case 163036 opened August 26, 2016. All four cases involved RMC 4-15101C1. Three citations have been issued in the past two years to Ms. Henriquez. The listed property owner is in Ms. Henriquez's mother, who passed away several years ago. Contact was made with her stepfather, who stated he signed over the property to Ms. Enriquez several years prior. However, due to her fin current financial status, has been unable to transfer the deed to her name. On June 23, 2014, I received a citizen complaint of excess garbage trash behind the property, causing a foul smell and a health hazard. A search of this address and rims revealed the previous case indicating a similar situation in September 2012. A letter was sent to the property owner at that time indicating, as this was a repeat violation, any future violations of this code will result in a citation issued without warning. The same date, I met with Ms. Enriquez, who stated the trash would be removed that day. I advised her if it was not removed by the morning of June 25, 2014, a citation would be issued. Inspection of the property on June 25, 2014 revealed no trash had been removed and a citation issued. On July 7, 2014, contact with Waste Management revealed this address has not had trash removal since May of 2013. I subsequently contact, was contacted by business owners on West Station Street behind Ms. Enriquez's property, who stated they would provide a large dumpster for her to place all her trash in it as it was constantly blowing throughout the neighborhood. Waste management provided a three-yard... Oops, let me get the slides going.
uh, provided a three yard container free of charge for her to place all her trash and garbage in it. On July 15, 2014, the container was placed behind her residence. Ms. Enriquez appeared in court August 8, 2014 for the citation issued June 25th and received a written notice to correct the violation. On August 26, 2014, the property was reinspected and determined to be cleared of all previous violations. Ms. Enriquez was mailed a letter that advised that if there are future violations of the RMC violations, it will result in her receiving another citation without warning and her property will be monitored regularly. On September 8, 2014, I again received another call regarding excessive amounts of trash, furniture, and debris in the front and side yards of the property. On September 9, 2016, probably 2014, I met with Ms. Enriquez and issued her another citation. The furniture and trash and debris were subsequently removed. On August 25, 2016, an RPD officer advised he was required to respond to 215 West Panama Avenue regarding the residents of the property stealing water from a neighbor. The officer stated he verified there was no water to the residents of the property and that the occupants confirmed it. The same date, I contacted the Indian Wells Valley Water District, who stated the water had been turned off and the meter locked on July 21st, 2016, due to non-payment. Contact with Southern California Edison also advised that electrical power had been shut off on that same date due to non-payment. Clear inquiry revealed the listed property owner, Ms. Melgar, passed away April 24th, 2011. Inquiries with the Kern County Treasurer Tax Collector website revealed the property tax currently owed is $5,643.74, with the last tax bill having been paid April 10, 2009. The property was in power to sell status, which means Kern County could seize it and sell it at an auction to receive their money back. On August 26, 2016, I responded to the location with two RPD officers advising the residents of the property to include Ms. Enriquez that, there, at, that as there was no water or power to the structure, it was being red tagged as being unsafe for human occupancy under California Health and Safety Code Section 17920.3. Ms. Enriquez was advised they had until 1700 on that date to vacate the structure. She asked if she was able to have the water and power turned back on if she could stay and was told yes. Red tags were posted on the front of the structure as well as the right and left side of the doors. <coughs> in addition, I, it was also noted there was an excessive amount of trash, junk, and debris in the backyard area. In previous cases, Ms. Enriquez was given a citation for these violations as she had knowledge of requiring the trash not to build up and required it to be removed at least weekly, she was issued administrative citation A0053 for violation of RMC 4-15101C1 and 13-1.3A, which is basically it's required to remove trash on a weekly basis. Although the citation that I gave her did not give a corrected by date, I advised Ms. Enriquez if she was able to have the water and power turned back on and if the trash and junk and debris are not removed from the backyard by Tuesday, September 6, 2016, she will be issued another citation. On October 12, 2016, Ms. Enriquez was provided an authorization to, authorization to enter access her property when she arrived at the police station inquiring about entering her property to obtain her belongings. She was also provided the notice of pre-abatement public hearing to abate property, which the hearing to be conducted November 22, 2016. I advised Ms. Enriquez that if the property were cleaned up before the hearing took place, it would be canceled and the case closed. Subsequently, the Planning Commission meetings were canceled for the next two months, and letters were mailed to the Panaman address advising of the changes to include 
this meeting on January 24th, 2017. Although Ms. Enriquez did provide me with her cell phone number, calls were not answered and the voicemail feature was not set up. On December 30th, 2016, I reinspected the property and it appears someone has been bagging the trash, garbage, and debris. However, there continues to be an excessive amount of loose debris in the backyard area. Currently, there is a slight smell of garbage. However, once spring summer arrives, it will likely cause neighbors to complain again. On January 11, 2017, 2017, I reinspected the property and the bags of trash alongside the structure had been removed. However, a large amount of furniture, trash, garbage, junk, and debris remain in the backyard. This morning, today, I reinspected the property and the bag trash had been removed. However, there was still an excessive amount of trash, garbage, and debris in the backyard of the property. An inquiry with the Kern County Tax Assessor website this date revealed all back and current property taxes have been paid as of December 21st, 2016. <coughs> According to Ms. Enriquez, she is in the process of selling the property and is starting up probate again so she can get the property in her name and transfer title once it's sold. The prospective buyer paid the back taxes, so it would not go to a tax auction. Once sold, she stated she plans to move to uh, Trona. Order of abatement to be conducted by the property owner, the complete removal of all trash, junk, garbage, and debris on the property, that the abatement be conducted will be completed no later than February 7, 2017. <coughs> That's it? That's it. Okay. I didn't know if you were done or <laughs> needed to wet your whistle. <laughs> Commissioners, comments or questions? I have a few, but. I have one. Do you have anything? Go, go ahead. And I have one general question which I always wanted to ask. Do, do you, does the officer need to read all these? In the meeting, it's a lengthy one, so. Can we just bullet those things? Is that okay? I mean, I don't know. Well, I, I think uh, what we're trying to do is because in city council, they run into a few problems where they felt like that, that we're over pushing uh, in some instances that we're taking property away or we're doing this or we're doing that. And so Officer Booth wanted to go to great lengths, not only for the listening public, but for those that are here that this is what we've done to try and work with her and, and what amount of time uh, we've, we've been trying to work with her so that the, it's not just us being heavy handed because uh, we've seen um, a trash collection that's offered free containers. We've, we've seen other opportunities for her to, to uh, you know, clean up the property. And uh, so I think it's important for the public and, and those that are listening to understand that this is a long process. This isn't something that we do lightly or arbitrarily. Okay. So that's, that's why he reads the process. And, and I know it takes some time, but I think it's important for everybody to understand if they didn't get the expanded uh, agenda. Yeah, you I, agree I, with that? Officer? I basically wanted to make sure that you knew the background of it because it's basically over a two or three year period I've been trying to work with this property owner. And each time I have her clean it up, it again starts looking like this. And the uh, neighbors are basically the one that's next door. He has rental property there and he says he can't get anybody to rent a place because of the smell. And in view of the recent developments where the property taxes are paid and the property is being in not in escrow, but it's being sold. That's so what she claims. Oh, okay. But obviously, whoever, somebody had to pay that amount of money, and she told me that it was the uh, new buyer, the one who wants to buy the property. Because mm -hmm. being that it is in uh, power to sell, Kern County could put it, would have been able to put it up for auction this coming March. So if she doesn't do the abatement, then we have to step in and do that, right? The resolution I want is to basically clean up the property. If she doesn't 
complete it, I will go out and hire a contractor to clean it all up and haul it away and put a lien on the property. Okay, thank you. Mr. Sanders? That's actually exactly what I was going to ask, is what, what's the process from this point on? Well, if so I they, do the abatement and we do, and I put a lien on the property, and then come June time frame, I put in a uh, special assessment, which will go to uh, the amount that's owed to us will go toward the property taxes and will have to be paid in conjunction with it. And then the city gets their money back. Okay. But they basically have till February 7th. Yes, sir. To clean it up. But I've, I've, obviously I will work with her. I mean, if I can see that she's actually doing a good job and getting rid of it, I'll hold off. Okay. So my question would, would be this. Um, rather than just go out and do an abatement on this and, and start that proceeding, um, can we get verification of this phantom individual that's going to buy the property, a letter of commitment, um, because if it's got to go through a probate period, there's a certain amount of time and get a commitment from him to clean up the property because he has an invested interest and give him a time frame. Is there money owed to the city at this point? Uh, did you write a citation and is there is there money owed? I wrote a citation to Ms. Enriquez. Okay. And... Um, I don't know if she has paid it or not, and she hasn't told me who the current buyer is. She is difficult to get hold of, like I've mentioned. Well, that's, uh, you know, commission and public, that's, that's where I'm at is obviously somebody paid this money, and they need to be on board with this. And, and so do we, do we take the effort to try and contact her and and uh, get this person and get them into the process because certainly they've invested six thousand and something dollars and they're not willing to lose it but if they understand that there's there's an abatement out there and there's going to be additional costs he may want to clean it up himself yeah i will definitely try and get hold of miss enriquez and find out who the buyer is and contact them so i i'm okay with doing the abatement but i, I really don't want to incur any additional cost to this property or this this property owner if in fact we have a true buyer that can be brought into the process and will do it rather than us having to um, take city funds pay a contractor and and then put a lien on it through the through the deed oh, I uh, agree. with, with I the county i will definitely uh, so check, so that would be my that. preference commission sure. i don't think we can we can't you're not suggesting that we f we enforce that but no, I'm, I'm okay with going ahead building. with the abatement, but I would prefer that he go to these steps before <laughs> we actually enforce. Sure. No, I understand that. No, I have no problem with that at all. Okay. Any other comments from the commission? Any comments from the public? Okay, so I will entertain a... Oh, okay. Dave Mouthy is just... I just want to say that's a good move, I think. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Okay, so I will entertain a motion on uh, Planning Commission Resolution 1703, a resolution of the Planning Commission, City of Ridgecrest, confirming the finding of the code enforcement officer and ordering the property to be abated. Second. Commissioner Cox? Aye. Commissioner Rajaratnam? Aye. Commissioner Yates? Aye. Commissioner Sanders? Aye. Four ayes, one absent, motion carries. Thank you. Uh, moving into B, uh, 10B was uh, SPR 17-4 SCC Administration Building Site Plan Review. Staff report. Yes, sir. Uh, the... On uh, January 10th, 2017, Southern California Edison, along with Cal Architects, submitted a, an application for site plan review for a new 11,184 square foot prefabricated administrative building on the northwest section of, this, of Southern California Edison's property, which is zoned commercial service at uh, 
510 South China Lake Boulevard these with the existing with the plan of the existing uh, brick administrative building to be uh, which is currently there to be dem demolished to make room for the proposed uh, prefabricated building uh, the current uh, administrative building is is uh, is uh, with all of its small rooms leading to operational inefficiencies and uh, confusing pathways of travel with the rest with the restroom and other main entrance failing to meet the current accessibility requirements on the on-site vehicle access being not ideal due to the close proximity to the entrance to customers parking lot and to the intersection of China Lake Boulevard and Upjohn. The lack of off-site uh, stacking area for Edison vehicles entering the site and the current administrative building will be demolished to make room for this new prefabricated and that's the reason for that. Um, I've, the first uh, of many findings that I would like is to just identify that we uh, we are proposing that this be an infill project which meets the requirement of the categorical exemption 15332 under the current CEQA guidelines. So we believe this is a category exempt project due to the infill nature of it. Um, within the site plan submitted to the Planning Commission is a uh, an, uh, both an aerial uh, for this site which uh, is showing the proposed site and uh, the current administrative building which we'll see on the left side to be demolished and uh, looking east from the, the, the uh, planned prefab building. Um, also as an existing uh, hella part and an existing pole storage, uh, these areas would be affected by this as well. This is part of the planned site plan. Uh, the existing garage building uh, is to remain and that's uh, uh, pretty a pretty new actual building and this is the proposed site plan as we see it uh, presented today in, in our application you will notice that the uh, the new site administrative building is essentially uh, noted uh, on the uh, your northern uh, the, uh, western part of the uh, of the build of the drawing that you see there the existing building that you see uh, which many of you will see going up John is a storage and, and uh, um, already approved and built storage uh, and for uh, hazmat and other materials this in, this building includes also a parking and entrance area that you'll note as well as uh, plans for a additional projects to be built in the future which are uh, identified in the building site plan but may not proposed today but showing in the site plan um, the interior of the building this is just a TI part of the building you can see um, which brought up uh, some concern within the staff on this discussion and which I will describe in a second our concerns this is the north elevation of the building and the south elevation of the building as you can see uh, along with the east elevation and west elevations of the building it's a free prab building uh, obviously uh, with uh, the slanted roof as you can see uh, which by the way is pretty pretty I'm sorry is pretty much and those are the drawings I have this is pretty much a um, much like what the building you'll see is in store has a look that's similar to the storage building that we see in Upjohn has a similar look we also just for reference have um, um, a representative from Cal Architects representing Southern California Edison so we can ask questions of those folks the um, the uh, major concern and the reason that we felt it needed to have site plan review was the fact that the use of the building is changing somewhat and we had the staff had a question is how the Planning Commission would like to view this in the future the existing building is about no well, at least 50 to 60 percent uh, was for payment processing so it was more of a commercial use the new building is probably 80 percent office and very little commercial payment processing of it all so it's more of an office use and it's sitting on a commercial zoned area which is okay because it's a down use but it has different setback requirements different as an office use than a commercial building would have so we're kind of looking for some direction in the future as to how to view these as well is do you want to look at it from the perspective that staff is looking at it that it's an office use now versus a commercial use so there's a change in use but it's in an appropriate zone we can you can do that in that zone so you're you're cool on that but the offsets and the setbacks and other things change slightly with the different zoning with the different use so that's one of the things that kicked off the site plan review from a staff standpoint the other thing that I wanted to point out is that since it's an existing 
the, the uses that you see, the conditions that you see for public works um, are exactly the same as you did. This building, this original plan was came to you, not the same building, but a similar building, I guess is the way I put it, came to you in 15, which was went through your site plan review. Some of you may remember. Those, those public work conditions are exactly the same in that site plan review as is now in this one. Those did not change at all. And we made some slight changes to the uh, existing community development uh, ones, which we can read through and go through individually if you'd like, or the public needs. But the, uh, the major ones dealt with, again, the, the public, uh, the office use versus the commercial use I described to you, and just meeting the conditions associated with that. Um, the other question we have is that uh, we're, we're facing on a staff standpoint that we want to bring up to you and you're going to see in some other um, other uh, site plan reviews that we're going to talk about um, uh, as well. And oh, by the way, we should probably, the uh, chairman had brought this up, as this is the opening of public hearing, so we need to identify this as a public hearing item. I'll, I'll um, open that up. Staff okay, report. okay. Um, and um, the, um, that is relative to landscaping. We did not put, we have a conflict going on in, in the mind of the staff right now, is if we can, we have a, a water shortage and a water issue that we're trying to conserve as much water, the city and the, and the water district is heavily involved in trying to reduce water use in the community. And yet we have a, uh, a coverage issue associated with landscaping, so we're asking the, making the, 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 the uh, new developer put in landscaping, even if it's zero scape, it still uses water, as opposed to, you know, not. So what we chose to do is to not put the condition of landscaping in, and I want to make sure that the Planning Commission knows that because you can add that in if you wish, you feel it's important. We chose not to do the landscaping condition, but rather put in their conditions associated that they meet our, land, our water use, if they put in their own landscaping uh, relative to that, that they meet the plant requirement of the, of the, uh, of the water district, you know, that they use drought tolerant plants, and that they meet those, those water restriction conditions that we have. Um, but we didn't put a coverage, which we normally might do in the, in the past. An example of why we didn't do that is the perhaps the Walmart project where there was a requirement for landscaping and there's been some concern about even though it's zero scape going into those, there's a lot of watering going on to establish that zero scape. And so that was prompted the staff to consider this as well. Um, and something we need to have the Planning Commission become aware that it's not in there and that if you want it in there, we need to add that to some of the plans we're going to show here. Uh, of course, we're not requiring that, uh, we're, but we're not also not restricting, which is the other side of that, that uh, the, in terms of landscape, other than the water uses that exist within the, the, the city municipal code and the, and the, and the water district's uh, requirements, uh, in terms of limiting the amount of landscaping, either other than it has to be zero scape and meet those plants. So we're kind of being neutral on landscaping and requiring them, to th however, that they meet our water. So we're, we're trying to cite in favor of the water restrictions as opposed to the landscaping. Um, and I'd be glad to answer any other questions or concerns you have relative to that. The staff is recommending site plan approval with the conditions presented and feels that it will be a, a, an advantageous project for the, for the city. We do again have uh, the architect and the, and the Ed Edison folks here if you'd like to ask them specific questions or, or comments at this point as well. And that's the staff report in a very short form. Thank you. So let's open up the uh, public hearing, but I'd like to start with the representatives from Southern California Edison. Good evening, Commissioners. I'm Richard Smith. I'm the Program Manager for Corporate Real Estate for Southern California Edison. Um, in charge of the uh, ongoing project uh, on the corner of Up John and South China Lake. So um, I'm here to answer some questions. Um, I do have a couple quick comments. The use of the building, uh, we've downsized a little bit of the front office where we take payments because we've changed the methodology of payments. The staff that would use the, existing, the new building is exactly the same staff that is in the building today. 
So no operation would change um, with exception of the guys that do manual work in the very back of what would be our admin building today have moved over into a pre their own little structure. But the office portion and the people that occupy the building now would be the same exact staff. We've temporarily moved them into trailers. We would just move them back. So essentially we're changing the shell from the existing structure, which was the masonry structure. As we got into that structure, we found that there were some issues with the rebar footings, some of the stuff that was constructed, the building 60 years old, a um, long time ago. And in lieu of taking the risk of continually to find problems with that building, it's easier to just change the shell and have a new structure around the building. Okay, so I have a couple of questions, and then if the commission has some questions for you, Please. and then we'll turn it over to the public. Um, in the staff report, it talked about if we have, whether it's commercial use or uh, anyway, that if we change the use, that the setbacks are different. Um, do you have any feelings or comment on what the impact that would be if, if we change the designation at all? Hold on, I'll, I'll let Reed answer. Um, one of the things that, and I did note um, in the staff report, it talked about the Public Works Department. Um, the language from the Public Works is exactly the same. In the, those Public Works, the first two items, um, item A and B, I think it's a subset one and two in the Public Works, were dedications along um, the corner of Up John and um, South China Lake for the turn signal that went in and an additional um, dedication that came down uh, China Lake. I haven't determined exactly if this offset would affect those, but those dedications are completed and actually have been uh, 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 provided to the um, city already. So those dedications are done. Incorporated, okay. Uh, yes. Uh and the five-foot sidewalk is also constructed along the China Lake Boulevard. Uh, what we have is uh, behind the sidewalk, we have at the south side 15 feet 9 inches, and on the top side, we have 14 feet 9 inches, whereas you asked for 15 feet. So we're just three inches uh, less than your required 15 feet. There will be a fence line between the building and the back of the sidewalk. So I hope you can... Uh, you will accommodate 14 feet 9 instead of a 15 foot. Okay, so that was part of the question is what would be the impact if if we insisted, basically? And, um, we and so tr We'll try and move it 3 inches, but there, as you can see, there's a driveway coming over. We'll have to look at the implication, how it impacts our site. Okay. Yeah. The the other question that I have for you is is have you given any thought to landscaping, zeroscaping, drought tolerance, uh, something to enhance the building? Absolutely. Um, um, and, and could you give us any thoughts where staff is not really requiring it, I'm just wondering what SE has, has thought. Our, most of our buildings, we've actually went to a drought tolerant, um, basically for our uh, commissioning, we've went to a drought tolerant the landscape plan. We have a complete landscape plan that is ready for the building. It is a drought tolerant plan, so it will be submitted. Yes. Um, yes. I was going to say, will you submit that to the city? Yes, yes. We, we, we'll having, we have already submitted to the city, mm -hmm. uh, and it is dark tolerant plants with yeah. gravel and, and some plants on it. Similar to what you see out there now that we modified some years back to a more drought tolerant um, uh, landscape plan. But we would definitely work with the city as we go forward with that plan, that plan's already been submitted, to whatever level of drought tolerance you guys, I mean, we're obviously trying to conserve water through the state. Sure. So we're doing it on all of our facilities. We're even retrofitting our facilities with uh, zero water, uh, putting in rain containment areas, uh, catch and rewatering. So, but we do have that plan and it has been submitted. Well, this is something the Planning Commission is going to have to address because we have kind of a, yeah. a conflict, and, and so you're, you're ahead of the game, but I wanted to know what your, your yeah. plans were. Yeah. And uh, looking, at, looking at the north-south elevations, um, the north side uh, facing up, John, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. up, John. A lot of glass. We live in the desert. I'm concerned because I know what goes on in this building. Well, it is a double uh, glazed windows, 
and it is going to meet the Title 24 calculations. Okay. Aren't you worried about your Edison bill? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Everything will meet the new Green California Building Code, so in order to do that, we have to have so much light, but then also have so much. But everything we put in is dual pane, um, a minimum dual pane or the e-glass that protects from the, the heat. Okay, and I, I see, I'm just assuming that this is a corrugated steel uh, building. Are you doing any improvement on the uh, front face at all, like stuccoing the front face or anything? Or is it just stained steel building? It is, it is a steel building with glass, and uh, it is uh, going to have braces, similar to what the existing structure is along up, John. It will have the same character. Okay. Well, my, my only concern, because I look at the garage and I look at this, and then right next to it is the apartments, which is a stick build with stucco. Right. And, and a lot of times when we see these kind of buildings going, it's more of an industrial park, you know, type construction. I, I think the, the building's nice, but I'm, I'm just, you know, it just seems more industrial rather than, um, you know, what would be um, Walmart or or. Mervyn's or, or something yeah. else where it has a, a stucco face, you know, something that, that has a presentation uh, to the public. I'm not saying the whole building, but I'm saying, so. mm -hmm. uh, did you give any consideration to that? Yeah, uh, we could uh, look at a different finish for one of the few panels to uh, make it uh, a slightly different finish. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's that's just just a, a thought that that I, I like to see because <coughs> because if if things are developed through there, you know, if we put a bunch of metal buildings side by side, even with the glass and the architecture, it's it's not really going to be, you know, harmonious to a, a you know what we'd like to see as a commercial district. Okay. So, uh, commission, any other questions for uh, SCE? Will we be able to pay our bill there? Currently, yes. There is a plan before the California Public uh, Utility Commission has not been determined yet that those offices, payment offices, may be um, closed. They, there's no date or time frame right now for that to happen. Um, and if that did happen, there would be multiple al uh, alternates throughout the town, contracted locations for people to pay their bills. Thank you. So. Okay, <coughs> any other questions from the um, commission? Mr. Thank you. I just have oh, some questions yes. for staff, but maybe we wait till after the... Yeah, let's let's do that down here at commission discussion. I'd like to turn it over to the public. Thank you. Jim, th Jim is it relative to this item or for just some other questions? For this item, you might want to have me answer those now. Well, we well if we're in, in the middle of a public hearing, then uh, yes. maybe we we'll close public hearing, then I'll, I'll ask. Okay. Right. Make sure you get it. Are there any uh, anybody from the public that would like to come in? <clears throat> Mr. Matthews? Yeah, Dave Matthews. Um, Consider me an old fuddy-duddy or whatever you want, but I'm a person who likes to pay my bills where possible and when possible in person by check. There are many other people who even come in and pay cash because for whatever reason, they don't have a checking account. And maybe this person on Panamint Street was one of those types. But I do not go to these other payment outfits because some of them end up being locations where I just don't want to tread. Do you get, understand what I'm saying? They're sleazy to say the least. And there are other people that feel the same. So I am concerned about keeping that payment center open and therefore anything that takes place on the construction, I want to make sure we've got access, ingress and egress that is acceptable and, 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 and easy for the public to get in and out of. 
those are my concerns, and I keep biting my tongue here, trying to say that maybe we should just hold up the site plan until they decide to move the poles on downs. <laughs> Can I respond to that little comment later? We actually asked, uh, I'm sorry, in, their, in your package is a letter from Edison talking about the power lines that run over their storage facility, which is against their general order too, and they provided us with a letter on their plan on how they're gonna handle those power lines. So we did, did ask them about their own power lines going over their own building, um, and uh, which other building developments they would require to be undergrounded, and they have a plan for dealing with those. So we did kind of bug them about that, so. Any other public comment? Come up to the mic, please, yeah, if you, and, and give us your name, please. She's moved. Yes, um, I'm Rita Kalwani with Cal Architects. I just want to point out the top driveway, and when you turn right, it's a, a visitor parking, so it's outside the fenced area. So if some a, a public can enter right. the building, and there's parking there. Give you an access here and then driveway and parking here for the visitors paying bills. Which is, I think, an improvement because it takes the load off China Lake Boulevard. So um, I, I like. It was, moved, it was moved specifically for the stoplight so that we right. didn't have people getting tailored in problems. Okay. All right, any other comment from the public? Um, commissioner's discussion? Questions? Yeah, Mr. Sanders? A couple. Um, so the, uh, the setback that we're requiring is 15 feet along South China Lake Boulevard. They're saying their fence currently is 14. Nine. Nine. Is there is there an issue with that? Or is there anything wrong with us changing that to, to meet that? Or? I ha my answer is I have a really strange tape measure that's off three inches that we <laughs> judge it on. I mean, the truth is, is I don't think you know, that uh, to require them to move their foundation and other building three inches for that, I think, is uh, uh, being a little bit administerial. So I'm I'm more practical and say I would it's within reasonable. Yeah, but that, that's kind of what I was thinking. Of course, the planning about. commissions can choose whatever they want to do, but I'm just saying from a staff standpoint, we looked at it as 15 feet. That it still worked. But I wanted to make the point that that's why we're here, is that those changes are important when you look at the use for future purposes as well. Now, for the use of an office building, is you mentioned setbacks being different, setback requirements being different. Mm -hmm. What is the setback requirement for an office building? Well, if it's a if it's an office building, it's 15 feet. If it's a commercial, you can there is no setback requirement. Oh, there is no setback. Right, requirement. you could go right to the curb. So okay, makes a big difference in some cases. Okay. Um, under community development, the condition number 10. Uh, we have it says two decorative pedestrian oriented street lights shall be constructed within five foot strips. Sorry. Um, item number 10, two decorative pedestrian oriented street lights shall be constructed within the five foot strip between the block wall and the sidewalk running parallel. I, I'm just having a hard time picturing what we're talking about there. It, is there a way you can point that out to me to this is a previous condition from the other planning commission um, that they put in the street lighting, and I believe that's on Upjohn. Is that not? Yes. Sir. Are we talking? We're not talking about stoplights. We're talking no, about street, street lights. Street, street lighting. The, the, oh, you're the, talking about just the overhead. Yes. Street lighting. That they're going to put in the new LED lights. Okay. Yes. Yes, sir. Currently, again, this is Richard Smith, program manager. Yeah. Currently on Upjohn, the only lighting you have is on the uh, power poles, and it's kind of directed out on Upjohn Avenue. So in the previous planning commission hearing, they asked us to come in and put a couple decorative lights along our property on that side and take those other fixtures off. And we agreed with the city that we would go ahead and put those handholds in and actually put two light fixtures up, um, whatever okay. the city was looking for in there as far as decorative lights. Okay. 
So Giant. are those are those currently up? No, uh, they're, no they're not constructed yet. This is okay, as far as I know. And, and that's they, just for the. That's just because to help pedestrians. It's not. Yeah. It's not shining on the road. It's, yeah. Okay. They will be done. Okay. Um, and I had one other question. Let me get to it here. No. Nope. Lost my place. Um, so is that different than the public works condition one a? VII construct decorative street lights along up John Avenue frontage. It's the that's a, no, that's, that's the same, same condition. That's the same, same thing. We okay. both we both the planning department, building department wanted to make sure they did it, so we put them both in there. Right. <laughs> okay. I'm good. I I would I would be in favor of go ahead and changing that requirement of 15 foot to 14 nine just to. And you guys will help us with the down street poles, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll pull out our funny tape. And, uh. <laughs> Any other commissioner comment? I have one comment to make. I mean, where is the stormwater drain here in this stormwater? Do you have a, a, a water basin uh, maintaining any of the water on the on site? Or is it all going into the street? Just past that drive approach, the secondary drive approach on Upjohn. Um, okay. Or, is, um, the water is retained right, yes, right in that corner, just to the right of that. That is a retention basin, and then the water is choked down. And per the city, um, the previous planning commission gave us the requirements of how much water they wanted to discharge there. So okay. that water is retained and backs up on that site. There's actually a basin kind of built in there, or a swale for the water, and then it's released in accordance with what the city public works wanted onto the roadway. Thanks, Mr. Smith. One last question for the staff. Based on the square footage, we only need 37 parking spaces, and we are stipulating 50, something different, or? Uh, if you go to community development conditions, what, number three. The, the the reason that we chose the, and that's a previous condition as well as the approved prior planning commission. I think the reason we are require, requesting that is they, it's a lot of that is employee parking. So they have, their their employee workload will change, staff will change. And, and actually, I believe Edison was in favor of additional parking okay. for their use. So, so they, they don't have any problem with that. No, I, I never have a problem if somebody wants to build excess parking. It's usually so when they, they want it. They don't have any problem. No, they don't have any okay. problem. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, so I'll entertain a motion on resolution 17-04. Resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of Ridgecrest to approve site plan review 1704 to place a new 11,184 square foot administration building for Southern California Ed Edison uh, property zoned CS service commercial at 510 and 520 South China Lake Boulevard on a 5.15 acre APN 080-020-67 and 080-020-67 68 um, applicant uh, Rita and you're going to have to pronounce the last name Kalwani. for me uh, pardon me Kalwani okay Kalwani. yeah that <laughs> and I'm sorry <laughs> Anyway, I'll entertain a motion to approve. I'll make a motion to approve with the the adjustment of 15 foot to 14 foot nine with that amendment. I second. Our engineer. Am I, am I okay. being too picky, Gary? No. <laughs> yeah, but that's okay. I second. Commissioner Cox? Aye. Commissioner Roger Rotnam? Aye. Commissioner Yates? Aye. Commissioner Sanders? Yay. Four ayes, one absent. Motion carries. Thank you so much for your time. Okay, moving on. Uh, we have uh, item C, SPR, uh, 
17-01, uh, Kern County Municipal Health Department, uh, Ridgecrest Crisis Stabilization Center Site Plan Review. Staff report. Yes, uh, this is a uh, site plan review for a um, excellent project, the staff feels, which is a Kern County Mental Health Department uh, Ridgecrest Crisis Stabilization Center. This is being proposed um, through a grant which is going to be received, and um, the uh, uh, hospital is acquiring the land from the city, and a site plan is being developed for um, the... Um, the uh, development, which is going to be, which you will note later, is sort of a phase development for a variety of mental health things. We also have members from the, uh, um, the uh, both the hospital and the uh, architect, uh, I believe, to uh, answer questions for the Planning Commission as we go along. This is the site. This is within the business park. The street that you see on the right is Chelsea. The street that you see uh, in lighter color is Ridgecrest Boulevard, as I'm sorry, China Lake Boulevard. This is what is defined as a, as a flag lot, which means, of course, as you can see, there's a pole, which is a access uh, that goes along the property to China Lake when it was developed, when the business park was developed, and is there. The, the site currently is owned by the Ridgecrest um, a successor agency and is being sold to the, the hospital uh, currently is in escrow and we sure hope to close by the end of the month, by God. Um, the, um, if I have to work at it, and Jim has to for the next 40 hours. Um, the site, as you can see, is uh, the phase, first phase of the project is going to be a, a, a smaller crisis building, which is the building that you're seeing within the blue lines. I apologize, the lines are slightly out of order. It will be followed by a second building and a third building, which will be utilized for office and other facilities. To the uh, south of the project is the Omni Family uh, uh, Health Center, and immediately to the uh, west is um, the uh, what we call the Atari uh, uh, Medical Office Building. It's a rather large building city there off of China Lake Boulevard. Immediately to the north is, is the, again, Taco Bell. Um, the, um, the building is uh, in IT, which is not part of the site plan really, but it does show you a, a building that's uh, internal uh, ITs for that building uh, that they're proposing on this site. Um, the, um, and it's a crisis center. The north elevation, east elevation are defined here um, uh, and in structure. Again, this is in our business park. Um, and is not uh, going to be visible actually from China Lake, but rather from Chelsea. Um, and if I can have another slide, here we go. South elevation and west elevations are proposed, as you can see here as well. Oops, and we're, that's our next item. Um, the, um, the, the major issues that we looked at, we had are uh, the, that you'll notice again, we have the issue that's not which I defined already for you uh, relative to landscaping. The conditions do not require a minimum landscape coverage. Um, again, we still feel that the staff's position was that it's a, a water conservation is the more important issue than um, landscaping at this time. However, I'm sure that the, uh, there will be a certain amount of landscaping developed in the project, but we're not requiring a, a minimum coverage requirement uh, in the conditions we have now. Um, the uh, building, the um, uh, we are um, perhaps a little way, a little bit ahead of ourselves in the sense that um, um, we'd like to pr 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 promote and propose that this um, uh, that this uh, site plan be be approved and the conditions thereof identified. We provided you with both community development conditions, which are in your. Uh, resolution and, and expressed within this, and we have also um, provided you with um, uh, our public works conditions associated with draining and, and drainage and easements and so on. A couple of the significant issues that we had discussed that has been a discussion on this that we probably should identify to you, and I don't think any of these particular uh, drawings or pictures really define that easily for you. 
but there is a um, attached to this property is a um, easement which goes north and west. I mean, I mean, sorry, south, north and south, and that is uh, within the property itself, but has been fully improved at the request of the city um, by the medical office to the immediate west, and that will be used. Uh, will remain as access, utility access, and will provide some uh, vehicle access relative to serve the properties to the uh, south of it, and also act as a, essentially, forgive me if I would call it a driveway access for the parking that you will see immediately uh, to the building there, and also provide some parking, parking for both medical facilities, the crisis center and the medical office building. There's another access easement which was taken into consideration which serves for utilities uh, primarily uh, power and sewer and that's running south um, I'm sorry east west the uh, section of the of the of pole which you'll notice here I call it the pole of the flag which is the one that joins China Lake that's actually fully improved and will provide access both the Utari to, to uh, the medical offices call it that the Taco Bell to the immediate north the medical office to the south and provide access to the new crisis center uh, which will be which is being proposed so that will provide traffic access from China Lake their intention is to build as you will note in the drawings um, access from uh, um, Chelsea so there'll be cross access there so um, uh, I believe traffic flow will have a pretty uh, good project here the conditions are identified we would be happy, both Lauren is here, also representatives I mentioned, the architect, uh, are available to answer your questions and conditions, and that's the, oh, I also want to point out we're looking at this from an environmental standpoint, again, as an uh, infill project, obviously, it's pre-existing, and also that site was originally, there was an environmental impact report done by the Navy when the property was bought from the originally established as the, as the business park, so there's ample environmental in there. But it, I think it's an infill project in the purest in the sense that you take a look at it. So we're looking at that as a cortical exemption as an infill again um, from your environmental standpoint. And that's the small and condensed report from the staff. We'd be glad to answer questions or you have the opportunity to talk to other folks as well. I have a couple of questions for staff, uh, but uh, any anything else from any of the rest of the commissioners would like to ask staff a question? No, I'm just curious to know what kind of facility is this? It's a, it's a middle crisis center. What, and people reside there? Or? Uh, you'd probably be better off to ask both uh, the uh, the folks representing that exactly what they're going to be doing in there. So while he's walking up, let me ask... Uh, probably going to put bankers in River. No. Staff and Lauren, this, this might be for you as well. I'm, I'm interested in this slide that shows... Uh, kind of an irregular property line. Is this a lot line adjustment that you're doing showing phase one on the uh, south side? I assume that's, that's the south side. Um, uh, why, why the jog in the, in the line? And in addition to that, um, why in phase one are we not asking for some sort of access to Chelsea? And then also... Uh, in this, uh, I did not see, uh, as we've required from the other Taco Bell medical offices, so on and so forth, um, uh, did we see a condition whereby the applicant agrees to not protest the formation of a landscaping and lighting uh, district? Um, I can answer the question on the irregular shape. That's called a staff goof. <laughs> okay. So it's <laughs> it's actually the full, the, the uh, there is no lot parcel change it's just one parcel and okay, there's so that no squares split. off yes it's okay. just a, it's just trying to show you phase one that's all that they're proposing and we we goofed on the line it should be down all the way so I can answer that one a staff goof that was easy Lauren yes uh, mr. chairman I can address the uh, access issue off of Chelsea See, the uh, applicant is this thing on can everybody hear um, just get closer to it. It is on. I can hear you. Okay. Um, there you go. The applicant had requested that the city waive or uh, vacate uh, public access requirements off of the uh, the what, what's identified as that uh, access off of Chelsea. Uh, the original map identifies a 60-foot wide uh, dedication for access 
uh, drainage and utilities. And the applicant has asked for that uh, portion of the uh, public access to be uh, vacated uh, for access only and retain uh, the rights for drainage and, uh, and uh, utilities. Uh, therefore, that uh, access would become a private uh, access in which uh, the uh, junction or the intersection at Chelsea Street would not require um, a, a true intersection uh, street improvements, uh, but rather now a, uh, a commercial driveway approach. Um, the, the, currently, there are no uh, conditions for uh, improving anything on that uh, beyond phase one. Uh, that would be uh, addressed as a part of the uh, the uh, police and fire looking at uh, the uh, any circulation issues or access issues. Uh, they may uh, require that there be some sort of all weather access or a, diff, a, a separate way of accessing that property for either uh, uh, fire protection or uh, maybe emergency services access. So uh, staff has not uh, conditioned any improvements beyond that phase one. Well, my, my concern, the reason I bring it up is, is eventually we're going to have access to Chelsea, correct? Can I interject? Uh, yeah, Jeff please. Goodspeed with Inland Architects. I, I thought in the conditions of approval for the, the engineering department, one of the things was design and construct ADA compliant commercial driveway and match up paving for access off of Chelsea Street. So I guess that's what you're saying, a commercial drive break that's ADA accessible and brings traffic through also from Chelsea, not just off of uh, China Lake. China Lake. So and we are willing to do that on phase one. So we'll provide the drainage, uh, curb and gutter, and drive improvements and the drive break from Chelsea in phase one. OK, well, that's that was that alleviates a concern because if, if we have more and more improvement coming and the only access for fire emergency vehicles off China Lake, as well as to the general public, uh, having a secondary access is, is paramount to not only fire uh, emergency services, but uh, it seems like uh, flow. And if we're going to do a phase two, phase three, and eventually it's going to be there, uh, I would like to see some sort of improvement down to Chelsea. I agree. We'll do it in phase one. Okay. And then... Um, Staff want to answer about uh, applicant agreeing not to protest the formation of a, a lighting yes, landscaping district? Yes, uh, that's under uh, Public Works Condition 2L. Uh, uh, prior to building permit issuance, sign and record an affidavit to agree not to protest formation of annexation into street lighting, landscaping, maintenance district, or benefit assessment district for drainage facilities. Thank you. I have no further questions, Commission, before I open up uh, for this, uh, for the architect. Mr. Chairman, I may yes. I also add something here? Uh, staff would also recommend that uh, if, if a landscaping is, uh, if landscaping is proposed for the project, we would like to advise the applicant that uh, it would be wise to have a separate irrigation meter if uh, landscaping is proposed for the site. Yes. And the reason for that is the... Uh, sewer uh, availability fees that are on your tax rolls. It'd be wise to have uh, your irrigation uh, demands met through an irrigation meter, not pay anything on your sewer assessment bill for uh, water that may go on a landscape. Yes, thank you. We'll have uh, separate meters and separate backflow preventer systems for Very good. both systems. Commission? Mr. Uh, Goodspeed, is that what? Yes, sir. Okay. Were there any other conditions or, or that you had concerns about? Or? Uh, yes, there's a there's two other ones, actually, uh, possibly three here. So we agree the, the drive will make its way all the way to Chelsea. There's kind of an existing, um, well, the, the first agreement, you talked about the easement running from north to south. It's just east of the existing dermatology medical building. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. And it'll share that access between uh, our new phase one building and their dermatology building, uh, allowing uh, Taco Bell cross traffic to the to the Chinese restaurant cross traffic across our property. And we plan on leaving that open. We plan on sharing maintenance and access 
Um, what I don't want to do, and hopefully we would ask that this would be a, kind of a condition in this shared access agreement, is that that legal document and the drawing up of that between the hospital when they actually do close escrow and the dermatology owner, um, that contract not slow down the certificate of occupancy due to the state funding um, and the county timeline of them being in June seventh. I believe is, I believe that we have because I'm handling the uh, sale escrow from the from the city standpoint or agency actually successor agency. I have to be careful. It's a successor agency selling the property that we've agreed that those kinds of things can be uh, dealt with appropriately. Uh, prior to after closing, so you, those issues will be resolved uh, through the escrow process and sale process. Okay, and that won't hold up the CFO for the actual the building. I'm sure that we'll have the sale conditions taken care of by the time you get the building built. Perfect. Thank you. And then uh, my second <laughs> item that I wanted uh, clarification on was the on-site detention basin for stormwater. And it, Everybody, uh, I believe this was a larger development where we're kind of a lot in that development and it seemed like none of the adjacent uh, properties had retained that stormwater on site and it all went to the street. And we're hoping to do the same thing. There's kind of an existing uh, drainage channel that has brought uh, water, I think, even from possibly part of the Chinese restaurant uh, north onto the dermatology, and then most of the dermatology uh, stormwater comes onto our our parcel through that access drainage easement, and we're hoping just to drain our water, their water down that street to Chelsea, and off uh, off to the street channel where it may be. I think it keeps migrating north and ends up in a Chelsea, yeah, in a field there on Chelsea. Mm -hmm. Goes down Chelsea it, to it a storage. Chelsea. A yeah, storage. Now we don't it have ends it. up on Ward. Uh, the extension Ward, the dead end on Ward, uh, uh, empties into an unimproved uh, area of uh, a low depression, a natural low depression, a natural sump, so to speak. So, uh, yeah, it sufficient? does drain that way. It's 12 and a half and, uh, acres. It's the, the uh, city owns that property. The, uh, I mean, the, if, this, if this built out, is it sufficient to hold the water? The uh, staff, uh, we have not uh, completely determined that the adequacy of the existing sump is sufficient to handle all the proposed improvements that are uh, proposed for the business park. I would be reluctant to uh, say that uh, with uh, what has been proposed for the business park, not knowing the amount of impervious surfaces that may be constructed there, that the Sump would be adequate for all uses upon the business park. Um, I, I, I have included these grading conditions and detention uh, retention requirements for uh, the uh, compliance to our, uh, uh, our uh, drainage master plan, which requires all projects to have uh, detention upon the site. I believe the other projects. Uh, I believe there was uh, uh, non-compliance or, or rather uh, w the re ordinance requirements w were not uh, or, uh, uh, not enforced and therefore uh, we, we are uh, going to have to suffer the drainage impacts for those projects. Yeah, the way the drainage is set up now, it doesn't seem there was a master plan in place for the, you know, for the two parcels to the west of us actually draining <coughs> on to our parcel. And then for us to be burdened to um, not only survey how much water they're dumping onto our site, but actually properly retain it and calculate it seems like a, you know, kind of unfair burden to this project and our property owner, uh, considering that's kind of an existing condition that has been allowed to happen. Right now, we don't have the uh, retention basin kind of figured in the site, so it will lose potential uh, building area for, for at least phase three. Um, uh, I might mention there are subsurface uh, uh, methods of disposal. Uh, there are, uh, there are uh, containment uh, vessels uh, 
almost like a leach field type of uh, construction that can be constructed on the open areas or even under parking lots, which can uh, pick up that uh, additional drainage and, and retain it. Is um, that an additional cost to our parcel? And the, the, main, the main criteria that I really worry about is us doing engineering and evaluation on parcels that we don't own and that are already dumping onto our parcel now. So to actually get a, a figure of how much water they are moving onto our site, I'm going to have to get my survey crew back out there to resurvey two parcels that my client doesn't own, hopefully them allowing me to do so, and then have my engineer calculate how much water is actually dumping onto my parcel, and then in addition to our water, and then figure out how to retain that at an additional cost to our project. That would, that would just be my main concern for that. Mr. Culp, uh, my understanding is, is that the uh, original design of this business park was that the, the runoff waters would go into the, those two sump areas, I think a five acre and a 12 acre. The question I have is when I look at the medical office, which is, is fairly new, or even uh, Taco Bell, uh, can we not uh, go back and require them to um, retain and divert so that it's not impacting this property. In other words, uh, they may be draining north or east, um, but, but yet uh, the city ordinance has always been that we're not doing harm to our neighbor. So they're dumping on the neighbor, whether it's a retaining wall or a divert ditch or, or whatever it is, so that it ends up out on Chelsea or, or out on... Um, what's the name of this road in front of Taco Bell in the medical office? No, 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 that's, that's up it's, here. It's the one that's running east-west. It's unnamed. Okay, so the unnamed street, if, if they diverted it to the unnamed street so it's not doing harm to this property or any adjacent property, do they not have an obligation to, to put this in a, in a no-harm situation? Furthermore, if, if we've got the 5-acre and the 12-acre that was originally designed for this, even though the ordinance says that we have on-site or, or on retention, uh, we've, we've made exception. Uh, for example, we have the retention that Home Depot dumps into, and, and we've looked at uh, allowing the Warrens to dump into that sump. And so these sumps that are sitting out are natural low uh, depressions. Can we not um, al allow the water to go there even if, if maybe we require some additional improvement to those natural sumps, you know, to try and minimize? But, but these other properties have a responsibility not to harm the property next to it. Well, the uh, issue would it'd be a civil matter. As far as going back to them and requiring them to comply, uh, I don't believe we would have that opportunity. Any kind of uh, drainage issues uh, that uh, impacts others are, are really going to be a civil matter where to, to there speak. would be uh, some claim brought forth that there's been some damage or they've increased or uh, redirected flows that have impacted the property and therefore they could uh, file suit or make a claim that they've been damaged. Is this a conversation you could have with the owner of the medical building? Currently the medical office building and the Taco Bell um, are set up to drain down that natural uh, drainage easement that you call the unnamed street. And if we continue that street uh, that runs between Taco Bell and the medical office all the way to Chelsea, we can grade it as such to pick up all the water from that medical building, the Taco Bell, and the Asian restaurant and take it out to Chelsea and dump it on the street. That's kind of what we planned on doing. Which would go to the natural sumps. Which would go to the street down Chelsea to the north and then where it goes, you can kind of see it on Google Earth, it just fans out into that big, probably sandy so, property out there to the east. So the question I'd also have is, is in our, our lighting landscaping district, if we have a maintenance uh, portion in the sumps and that, can that be part of that same agreement? Well, if it has uh, to be staff improved included or, or, uh, in the condition 2L uh, a uh, benefit assessment district, and that uh, is uh, for drainage facilities in the event that uh, 
the area develops and they all agree to participate in a benefit assessment district for drainage facilities, then there would be some funding mechanism to be able to maintain, uh, maybe not necessarily to construct, but to maintain drainage facilities. Okay, I, that, that answers my questions. I, I would actually prefer that the, the drainage go to a, a common sump, uh, but that's, that's just my personal feeling because if we uh, retain in each one of these commercial buildings, um, we could end up with another health ha hazard uh, that I'm concerned about too. Um, but uh, I, I think if we have those abilities to develop and improve um, the natural drainage sumps and uh, there is a no protest on, on the formation of lighting landscaping district, that's probably my biggest concerns. And if they're, if they're gonna do the curb gutter and improvement down to Chelsea, that, that'll take care of erosion and other problems. It'll, it'll take care of a myriad of problems to add an additional expense to them on an on-site. I would, I would prefer waiving that, but that's my personal opinion. I, I actually agree with you, uh, Chairman Cox. I don't think that would be fair to the developer. So. Any other comments from the, from the uh, commission before I turn it over to the public? Questions for the architect? If not, then I'll open the, yes, sir. Sorry, I do have one, one other topic I wanted a clarification on. Um, street lighting, there's existing street lighting on Chelsea. Um, I'm not sure is that this, there was a, let's see, D1 here, uh, coordinate and construct decorative street lighting along Chelsea frontage and the interior street. So we're going to have landscape lighting, uh, not landscape lighting, but parking lot lighting that will be up against that easement on our side of the development for phase one. But we don't plan on actually providing street lighting, which the other developments haven't either. And the other side of that north won't be our property. So down that north side of that street that we're going to construct, we wouldn't want to provide site lighting on someone else's property, nor would we want to have to provide it all the way to Chelsea just for phase one, if that makes sense. So up against the building, there will be some overflow lighting similar to the, the layout of the south end of Taco Bell, where there'll be uh, two arms that kind of point over towards the, the street and then back towards our parking lot. That'll be on the north end of phase one. But the street all the way to the east and to Chelsea and then the, the Chelsea improvements to the street lighting, I just want a clarification on. I think the Chelsea lighting should come in with phase three, but uh, I would think that there needs to be some uh, street lighting on phase one on the unnamed street. Um, Lauren, what's your yes, plan uh, there? Yes, there, there currently is, uh, there, there aren't any uh, luminaires along that unnamed street. And uh, that was the reason uh, for the condition. We've got, uh, we've got, uh, uh, commercial development there and uh, it what appears to be the terminus of the uh, public access uh, to the properties and typically in uh, uh, cul-de-sac developments there is uh, street lighting uh, at least one street light along the uh, the uh, leg of the cul-de-sac and then one street light usually at the end of at the terminus of a cul-de-sac in which this kind of represents. And uh, also along Chelsea, um, the, uh, the standards generally wherever you have an intersection, you always have a street light at that intersection for traffic safety. And with that now becoming a, uh, a, a driveway, uh, not knowing what sort of uh, volume we may uh, have there and what uh, the public may utilize for, through, for a through access, it was uh, recommended that uh, we look at additional street lighting, particularly at that location. So there is a there is a street light existing on Chelsea and where our driveway would be, just to the north of where our drive 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 break would be. Um, if if we get into that light pole, we would we would definitely uh, relocate that that light standard on Chelsea, um, and we have no problem putting lighting on the private drive. 
at our side of phase one, but like, like you had said, Taco Bell in the medical office and the property to the north of us, all of those parcels we don't want to be uh, responsible for lighting that existing drive. So I just want some clarification on, you know, what exactly we're going to be uh, responsible for, for doing since we're already, um, we've already designed and uh, soon ready to permit the electrical plans for this, this project. So that's just kind of why I'm well, my, my really suggestion, clarification. my suggestion, Lauren, just for me, what is the standard distance between street lights? you know, on any given thoroughfare? Uh, generally, uh, 300 feet uh, is, the, uh, is the distance. Uh, at, at an absolute uh, minimum at the end of uh, cul-de-sacs and at uh, street intersections. Okay. And uh, the frontage on phase one to the unknown street? The pole and the flag. Well, it's uh, it's from, from corner uh, from corner from corner, China Lake Boulevard back to their. No, uh, no, no, not not from China Lake Boulevard, but from their corner, their their westerly corner to their easterly corner is how far? Well, you have it's, to understand. A, it's approximately yeah, 660 yeah. lineal feet. Uh, yeah. The difference there. Uh, you, you it's just to, short of 660. Yeah, you have to understand the flagpole belongs to the property, so the pole, if you will, is that stretch that's approved. Mm -hmm. And the square of the flag is where it ends there. So the improved portion is is about half the distance, approximately, of the of the total length between the end of the property on Chelsea and China Lake. So staff is not recommending that they that they put lighting both on the south and the north side. Uh, well, there wouldn't be any need for uh, lighting on on both sides of that. It's, okay, it's at, at, and, at and the terminus. Or somewhere near that terminus uh, would be uh, the recommended location. And, and staff is not in, uh, not asking them to uh, go um, west of their property and add additional lighting, are you? Uh, we had uh, looked at that as if it were a terminus or a cul-de-sac, with the applicant's request to vacate that uh, very uh, easterly portion. We did look at it as if it were a cul-de-sac, which the standards would call for one mid-block uh, light and then one at the terminus. Okay. And um, the brakes that I see in the uh, north side, are those those are drive entrances, correct? Yeah, would it be okay if I approached the map just so I could kind of yes. point and so we can clarify? There's an existing street light on Chelsea here, existing street light on Chelsea here. This is only parking lot lighting that faces here. There is a couple lights that face this frontage street. Taco Bell has a couple light standards here that have the, the double arms at about 20 feet tall. So they're probably catching a little bit of the street, but not a lot. It's not a 40 foot street light. Here, what we plan on doing, because we have a 20 foot height restriction on our site lighting too. We plan on doing a very similar scenario where we have site lighting standards that both face the street and the commercial here and here. So that would be in possibly a third one here. So one, two, three at 20 feet, not a full blown 40 foot street light, like, like a city standard street light would be if it's on Chelsea. Uh, we're gonna improve this drive here. Um, we really don't want to have to put site lighting out here, not knowing, you know, what we're going to be doing in the future. Um, this isn't our property, so we would really want to stay away from putting site lighting over there. Obviously, this is already developed, and uh, you know, we'd want to stay away from burdening this site to to tear up their concrete and sidewalk and run conduit. And I mean, that would be just costly for this project, considering that this is an existing Taco Bell. This is a large building, and we're a tiny little building. You know, the precedent's already kind of been set where this hasn't been officially lit with 40-foot poles. We're just kind of asking to continue the precedent that uh, the development's already been kind of set up. Well, my my thought to that is, is uh, uh, we don't continue with past sins. 
Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I understand that. <laughs> but but my my also my suggestion to staff and would like Lauren and Gary's input is on phase one, why do we not require because if it's every three hundred feet a standard light pole here and somewhere in the middle and somewhere here, just facilitating this phase one, not requiring down here or down here until this is phased out. Um, because we're already asking them to do improvements down here. If, if we have the standard lighting, which we should every 300 feet, uh, this will eliminate this project. Whatever sins are over here, we have flooding issues, we have lighting issues, whatever happened was a previous planning commission and I can't do anything about them. Yeah, okay? Understood, yeah. But we talked about the flooding and, and maybe a compromise there, but I'm, I'm thinking that we need to have some, and no, nothing on the north, but we need to have some lighting here and continue this lighting down here, which we would also require for them. Yeah, on phase two or, or no, three? on whoever's on the north side. But when you do uh, phase two or phase three, uh, do lighting or street requirements depending on those phases. Yes, yes. Uh, but you have 600 linear feet, and if we do a street light every 300, I'm looking at one at this end, one at this end, and somewhere well, in the middle. No, no, phase one's feet. portion is probably... 600, and I understand that, but, but uh, three lights you know, would would more than illuminate, but I, I'm suggesting that instead of looking to to fix somebody else's mistakes or to continue all the way down to Chelsea until he does phase three. So I'm thinking about like down street where we, we, we have alternating lights, I think right. probably every 300 feet. Would we do something similar here where we only have them build Maybe two. two lights, and then the north property would build the third light in, in the, the middle. middle. I, and I, I would be okay with that, too. But I, I don't think we need to add the expense to this project to because to, they're already doing paving and curb and gutter out to Chelsea. Uh, until they phase two and phase three, deal with the lighting there. Whatever Taco Bell did and the medical offices did, uh, truthfully, um, I, I don't want to hang it on this project. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may, uh, in, in terms of public works improvements, uh, staff would be okay with a uh, public uh, street light at the terminus near the corner of their uh, phase one at the, what would be considered the terminus of the public right of way, and staff would be okay with repositioning the existing, yes, uh, one light there. And that would be a, a, a public facility, a public uh, standard street light, and then uh, relocating the street light along Chelsea if, uh, if deemed necessary to illuminate the uh, driveway approach. The driveway approach. And when you say public, is that a 40 foot? Yes. Per the city standard yeah, full? Uh, yes. A standard, uh, what's called a marble light uh, decorative. Uh, Mar light, light. Marble light. Marble light, okay. Yeah, we would agree with that. That would be that would be more than adequate agreement. I okay, think. I, I I think that we're good there. So, if you don't have any other questions, I don't. Thank any, you very much. Uh, turn the time over for public comment. Anything from the public? Okay. If nothing from the public, then I would uh, uh, entertain a, a motion on resolution 1701 with the uh, changes. Um, uh, for the drainage to Chelsea and uh, the lighting requirement as stated. So we would do the, um, the lighting change. So moved. A second. Commissioner Cox. Aye. Commissioner Rajaratnam. Aye. Commissioner Yates. Aye. Commissioner Sanders. Aye. Four ayes, one absent. Motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen, all of you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Okay, moving on uh, real quickly. Um, we have uh, SPR 16-7 tractor supply site plan review. Yes, I, uh, I appreciate the uh, uh, planning commission indulgence. We do have a lot of plan, uh, public hearings tonight and site plans to look at. Um,
this this project is um, a an interesting one, and we'll be seeing more of this. This is the uh, 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 the use. It's going into the use of a existing building, uh, the former Walmart building, um, and um, it is a tenant improvement lease arrangement between the current property owner or to be property owner, I believe, and uh, Tractor Supply, which is the tenant, lease tenant on this project. Um, we uh, received the uh, application and the building plans in the city several months ago. Actually, um, about three or four months ago, the building plans have been approved, I believe, and stand ready for construction. They have been approved through the building department process and um, uh, those building plans are ready and, and we're ready to issue permits pending uh, the approval of the site plan by the Planning Commission as we talk tonight. So that's the uh, purpose is to move forward again. They would like to begin construction as soon as possible as well on the old Walmart building. We have, um, what we have is a CG area. This is a fairly large site. Some of the uniquenesses of it is that what we're here doing is the aerial that you see here in your in your documents indicates a uh, the area being considered for tractor supply uh, tractor supply is looking at a 32,368 square foot facility to be utilized um, and again I want to point out that the building is owned by uh, one firm that is leasing this to to um, tractor supply for the improvements um, the uh, unique part of this is the parking is perceived to be going to be utilized essentially jointly by all the participants in the building. There won't be a segregated parking spot for tractor supply and a segregated one for building two and a segregated one for building three. The parking lot is going to be utilized much like you see a shopping center jointly utilized by all of the tenants of the building. There obviously is a significant number of parking spaces so when the First thing that the staff looked at was parking location, plenty of ample space obviously at this point. We've also informed the uh, owner, building owner, that as they do site plan for site, they come in for the uh, new, the next section of the building or another tenant, they're gonna be subject to site plan review once again, which means we'll be looking at the building and the public improvements and all that again each time they bring in another building. They're planning on subdividing this building up and generating new utility hookups and so on. Um, so that was not unique. The interior improvements obviously are not a concern necessarily of the, of the, of, of our, of the commission, uh, but the outside are, and there are some unique things here that I'd like to point out. Um, this is the site plan as it's pointed out, again with tractor supply indicating that with the, with the uh, access for loading dock and so on on the unit, and again, the parking spots located here, they will have to supply appropriate or conditions within our, our public works conditions that they meet obviously ADA requirements and there's some, uh, we'll talk about some condition identified there. Um, we do have, um, again, the owner of the building here to represent and answer questions for you. Um, the unique part of this and one of the things we're at, that the tractor supply is asking for, again, staff had a concern with, is the current code doesn't identify, has any sections associated with public display areas, or in other words, outside display areas associated with the building. We just don't have anything in the code for that. It wasn't accounted for when the code was written back in blank, blank, before we were born time. Um, and it has their, but they are gonna be utilizing what was in fact the uh, existing uh, Walmart, uh, when Walmart was there, their, if you remember their garden area on the outside of the building, they're going to convert that into a major display area for tractors, <coughs> equipment, and hay, and, our, and that kind of stuff. I guess they do sell Still, hay at Tractor Supply. It's interesting. Still an outdoor area, though. But it's an outdoor area. And then the other significant portion that was of concern was, you notice in the purple here and the green area along the sidewalk, they're also asking for public for essentially an outdoor display. In order to do the purple area, they're gonna to have to take away some existing parking, um, and but they have ample parking, but they are gonna take away some parking areas and um, some uh, planter area as well, to existing planter area to uh, build those display areas. 
staff has, there is no code, so staff is going to depend, is asking planning commission what their feeling is. They, the tractor supply organization believe these important are important areas. They're asking us, uh, the planning staff has a, been asked to provide a letter author that they would be uh, approved to do that. So we thought the appropriate way to do that was to bring it to planning commission and ask your, uh, your, your guidance on this or direction on this, understanding that the, the problem the staff has is this, we think this is a very professional organization, we'll do it in an excellent way, display their equipment appropriately and so on. But it does provide an issue associated with the issue about multiple sins is that we do have people who do carpet sales on the corner and would argue that it's a display area. You, you follow what I'm saying. There's no guideline to direct it. So it will be subjective in the future as the Planning Commission looks at individual projects to determine whether or not their site area is appropriate. There's no, or we have to go to planning, we have to go to council and try to get some specific guidance or ordinance that cover or change in the code to identify these areas. It's just not there. So we are looking for the Planning Commission to give us that this is an appropriate, we can go forward with this and it's appropriate uh, for us to allow this to happen on this site. We do believe it's a good, good uh, staff would recommend it, but we, it is up to you. We believe we didn't want to make a determination when there's no code to determine it against. So uh, that's the issue there. Um, there, uh, I believe we have a, a person from Tractor Supply, I'd appreciate you come up and be available for questions, but that that is a real brief, simple, and of course you have the conditions already in front of you and that sort of stuff. So that's where we are, unless you have questions of me or, or we do have the person from, from there, we can go from there. I do have uh, a couple of questions in relationship to what they're asking for. So you're saying that we don't have anything in the municipal uh, code, but yet um, what does Jim Sherlon Ford do? What does uh, Ridgecrest Toyota do? What does the Beebs, where they have tractors do, where they all have outdoor uh, display? Um, I'm, I'm having a hard time considering this a burden. Uh, the staff didn't consider a burden either. That's why we're recommending it. The interesting thing is all of those are sort of auto dealers or equipment dealers within our code, and they, the, with as an equipment or auto dealer, that's allowed within the code. It's identified at their use of those outside display areas for equipment. It doesn't define this because this is not auto equipment. But tractor supply would be considered a an equipment. Well, I, the staff is recommending this. You understand? We we we're agreeing with you, sir. Okay. But but it's not defined. If you understand what I'm saying specifically, those are as auto dealers. But this okay. is so. My only question would be, why wouldn't they want to use the China Lake Boulevard side versus yeah. having it facing that uh, entry street? You'd have to ask them, sir. So uh, that would be a question for you. He's, he's just saying, uh, we understand the outdoor display, but why, why would you not want it on the China Lake Boulevard side, uh, that parking area uh, and landscaping area versus uh, College Heights Boulevard? Or, yeah, College Heights, I well, believe. Well, the entrance. It was, it? um, it's actually the, the entrance to the center from. Unnamed Street. Yeah. Okay, this is. My name's, uh, <laughs> we Lindsay have a lot Gadd. of unnamed streets here. Go ahead. I'm my sorry. name's Lindsay Gadd. I'm here on behalf of the landlord, Hicks Medicare Companies. Are you referring to the pink area? Yes. Okay, that's just our trailer display area. It doesn't, it's nothing stacked higher than about three feet, and that's really what it's there for. So um, it's just Tractor Supply is the one that put the site plan together, and that's where they preferred to have the display area. Okay. Any other questions from commission? Okay. Um, do you have any questions for us? No, I don't. I think I dr addressed everything with Gary and Lauren um, prior and we'll be working with them to finalize all of their conditions. Okay. Well, let's open it up for public comment, public hearing. Any comment from the public? Wow, we've got four or five coming up. Everybody looks. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's getting late. I'm getting punchy. Uh, the uh, the other thing is I might, I should mention that we're, again we're looking at this as a environmentally as a infill. Yes. It's actually not even. There's no impact to the environment at all on it. But. 
Okay, then I'll close the public hearing. I'll entertain a motion on resolution 17 07, a resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of Ridgecrest to approve site plan review 1607 to build a new tractor supply store in the vacant building of 911 South China Lake Boulevard zoned uh, CG General Commercial uh, on uh, 32,368 square foot of land, APN number 509020 developer Hicks. Pronounce it for me, Ridgecrest LLC, Ray Hicks. Motion? So moved. Second. Commissioner Cox? Aye. Commissioner Roger Rottenham? Aye. Commissioner Yates? Aye. Commissioner Sanders? Aye. Four ayes, one absent, motion carries. Thank you. Moving on, uh, number 11, discussion, another action item, site plan. Uh, 12 uh, for address 1245 North China Lake Boulevard, corner of Ward and China Lake. Uh, conversion of the Pizza Hut and the uh, Starbucks, or to the new Starbucks. Yes, this is a discussion item for the, for the Planning Commission. The reason we're bringing this to you is we believe this will be a time-sensitive project when it hits our, our uh, office and we may want to do a site Review. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, a staff review on this, and I wanted to get your input before, and the public input before we get to that situation where we're doing a uh, staff review prior to that. We believe this is a fairly simple project. This is presented to us by their, uh, by the uh, architect firm, and they're proposing. Um, let's see if I can get this to work. A uh, a reuse if the of the existing uh, building at the corner of uh, China Lake and Ward, which is currently being utilized by Pizza Hut, um, we, we, uh, the, they wish to establish a new a Starbucks in this facility. Uh, it's a large facility and it would be a very large Starbucks and um, uh, we're being informed that they may seek a wine, in, a wine uh, liquor, license. liquor license as well. So it'll be a wine and and Starbucks, so you can you can drink your coffee and drink your wine at the same time. So, yeah, I'm not sure how that's going to work. Do they have an Uber phone booth there? Yeah, we have an Uber <laughs> phone booth. Uh, it'll be a very trendy. <laughs> before we know it, we'll be Seattle. Okay. <laughs> the uh, the other the unique parts of this that we were very interested in uh, from a staff standpoint was you'll notice the drive-through parking line, if you will. They're going to put a part uh, a drive-through, which is one of their major reasons for looking at this building through that and they also want to have an outside patio area which is what you see in the in the drawing here that's somewhat hard to see but those are but are those are tables for an outside parking area a drive through area i mean the, i'm sorry eating area and uh, drinking area um, and we have not seen uh, many uh, i'm going to show you two architectural views in a second but not much in terms of the interior designs and all that we have not seen any building plans at this point we're simply showing you what we have here. That's why we don't have a formal application. It's not in front of you for site plan, formal site plan review, but I wanted to get some input from you on this. The other thing that I wanted to point out, the major concern we had also was, and we worked with our engineering department to make sure we had no easement accesses or easement impingements, if you will, on our sidewalk and our streets there because it's a corner intersection. When they expand this forward, if you'll take a look at that, it would actually change also the look of the place because of uh, the outlook because there's some part there's some landscaping in here that would be removed obviously as they uh, put in the drive drive through because there's just not enough land there we, we perceive uh, again we don't have detailed drawings to be able to determine dimensions but it looks pretty obvious to us that that that's going to affect their their current landscaping they have in there and in in that location um, which should be a reduction again we talked about landscaping issues um, so we're looking for any input you might have on this or major concerns you might have uh, on this design. The exterior, they're pointing out to us in order to meet their, their requirements, they're going to lower the roof line to, to an extent and take some of the, the, the upper uh, portion. The Pizza Hut look off. The Pizza Hut look and make it a Starbuck look, whatever that Starbuck look is. Um, and uh, they're eliminating, so the major thing here is this, this the, the, uh, structure on the roof that will be reduced in size 
and the Pizza Hut, uh, the exterior may be some modifications. Again, however, we have not seen any building plans, so we're not in a position. This is a picture of the current uh, area. As you can see, I'm, I'm concerned. My wish, you can see why I was concerned. Perhaps we've got to get a driveway, a, a driveway for their, for their a drive through here, and we've got to have a, a, a picnic area in there. It's going to get tight, in my opinion, relative to that. And I think we're going to see some of this, this, this grass area removed as they go through that process. But I haven't seen the drawings yet for that. So. That's my concern. They tend to use the existing sign exactly the way it is, only it'll say Starbucks there, and uh, from what I've been told, which also is interesting because I think they're going to have, again, they're going to be real close to their drive through driveway there. So it'll be interesting to see how they work on that. And of course, that would be reduced in height and some dimensional changes. And that's what it looks like right now. We perceive there's plenty of parking, obviously, associated with the project. Uh, and of course, we would require if they build this that they would, in, this, in the conditions, that it would have a double striping again, and all the things we need for AD, ADA associated with that. So, is this parking lot also? They'll have to build. Well, they have a trash, but they have another trash. We're going to have to make sure that trash is capable of handling what they have. So, I'm sorry. No, that's that's fine. Is this not a shared parking lot with another building down yes, here, it the is. old Camargo building? Or? Right. Okay. It's not actually shared. The parking there's a dividing, but there's no there's a property line in there. They actually own enough parking on their property line, but the parking is shared. I mean, there's no separation between. Do we the have two. loss of parking there on the east side, right there? Uh, uh, no, there's well, there is not actually. They're not really utilizing. There is some parking, but you'll notice there's no parking spaces defined in there. It's just open. There's no parking. Delineation in there. It's kind of interesting. Okay, and what is what is the width from the building to the sidewalk? I don't have those dimensions in front. Lauren, of me right do now. you know the the distance from the building to the sidewalk if they're putting in a drive there? Uh, I don't. I don't have those dimensions. They, the sight line that the fence does not have any dimensions. We don't have any dimensions. Flow that. of traffic. Uh, are they coming off uh, China Lake and they doing the circle and then exiting onto Ward? So that they get the lighted intersection. That's the way it looks. Well, we might probably ask them to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, because to try and enter with the China Lake uh, medians and stuff like that, it would be a problem. Uh, where if they they come into the parking lot and then exit onto Ward, they're already on an intersection. Well, actually, what I perceived what they would be doing also is entering on Ward. Going through that the galley or the parking well, area, they can enter and then or going exit, that way. But but yeah. I'd like to see the exit not not funnel onto China Lake okay. because the medians. They, we we just have too many people that want to kind of kitty corner or do something else, and so if they put that flow to where that exits onto Ward, um, and if there's sufficient width there and it meets engineering, I'm I'm okay with that. And reducing the height doesn't doesn't present a problem for me. Um, I, I don't see a problem. Commission? Do they plan on putting a barrier between the seating area and the drive through and any kind of like short fence or anything like that? You know, we don't have a drawing that indicates that, but it would be a safety issue. I would think they would we'd probably put a yeah, decorative fence Normally a six-inch curb, just like they do on China Lake, is classified as a legal barrier. So if they do a driveway, they'll have a curb. But the practice generally of Starbucks, if you take a look at it, is they put a decorative fence there. So I'm assuming when we see the building plans, it'll show that. Okay. But we don't have those right now. That's why it's a discussion and not a site plan review. You're right. I, I, don't, I don't see any particular issues from, from my standpoint. Jim? Yeah, I've got one thing. So there, how, how does this work with um, them wanting to sell liquor and having a drive through because can they sell liquor from the drive-through? <laughs> that seems like a pretty bad. Yeah, I, I would not think so. Uh, I, I think the, the 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 wine would be inside. They, what they've asked me is was that already prohibited through state law or something like that. Uh, I believe you can't sell liquor. Yeah, to yeah, a, beverage already. You can't have an open. Guidelines. You have to get out of your car. And go you can't have an beverage. open container in a car. Okay. I believe that's the case. But the, the reality is, I think what happens is the wine is sold inside the. the with cheese and that kind of stuff when you're sitting down inside. So you pick up your wine, cheese, and legal marijuana. And then you go to go, go to then you go get your coffee <laughs> and your bagel and then you go outside for breakfast. <laughs> um, 
I'm sorry. Come on. We <laughs> no, we, we got we got we got to lighten this up a little bit. The the uh, what we were the reason I'm I'm saying that is I had a conversation with the architect and they asked they were asking me about the liquor license and the process within Ridgecrest and their con interest in looking at wine. That's all I have right now. So mm -hmm. that's the reason I mentioned that. Um, uh, the other thing I probably should mention is that uh, we've had a, a, a preliminary conversation with uh, the Pizza Hut people, and they're planning, and just so people know, they're looking at a relocation of their facility oh, to okay. a delivery and pickup only, not this full store. So oh. I would appreciate the press understand that we're not seeing Pizza Hut go away at this point. We're just, maybe probably would be a relocation location they've defined I'm in discussion it's confidential but they have a location they're looking at so um, but that's that's the it would be an interesting um, uh, store for us we don't have not like we we need more coffee shops I think I think the only thing like it is probably Pony Express correct yeah. Th their main interest in this the rain I think their main interest interest in this site is the drive-through yeah. They, they want to have a drive through. Do they plan on keeping the other location open as well? They have. They have. They smile at me when I ask them that question, <laughs> so I don't know the answer to that. Someone was. I don't know how this actually works. Someone was telling me with the the f way the franchises work with Starbucks is probably not owned by the same. It person. could. It could well be that way. So they, I, I have. Seen, I don't know if that's true, but I they have kind of seen, compete against each other apparently. So. I've seen eight and ten Starbucks in the same city. So yeah. Every 600 feet with a light pole, you get a Starbucks. So. so since this is a discussion item, is there anything from the public that they might like to share with the staff? Yeah, Dave Matthews again. Um, so I gather what you're saying is that Pizza Hut is not actually going out of business. They're just going to a pickup and delivery uh, location and to me just uh, I'll throw this word out there that made Pizza Hut kind of unique that you it was a place where you could go in and actually kind of have a family meal with a f group of people some of the other ones you can't do that and I think we've got enough delivery and pickup pizza places uh, if it comes to that I'll make my own <laughs> um, the Starbucks, I guess, is going to be a new location. It's not; they're not going to close the one down by the uh, Arby's. And we're, move. we're we're not certain of that. They smile at me when I ask them that question, oh. so that tells me that it could go either way. I'm not sure what they're okay. doing, and it may be a separate franchise owner, as Mr. Sanders talks about. That, that happens. So I. Don't know that information and what they're going to do okay. with the old store. But I can tell you that having multiple stores in one city is not unusual for Starbucks. So. Yeah. Well, we already have, but not quite. I don't know. Anyway, the other thing is about getting a liquor license or, or whatever. Isn't there a some kind of a school in that building, the old Camarco building of some kind? Or am I thinking of another building? I don't know. Yeah, it's Christian school. Yeah. Well, they may not be able to get it. They, that's a choice that they would have to, yeah. process they'd have to go through, yes, sir. And that's done through the state. They control the right. liquor license yeah. process. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Matthews. Anything else? No, I was just commenting that comment. yeah, you could already get a beer and pizza, so... Yeah, I think it's probably a difference between hard liquor and and not. Yes. So, Very yes, sir. Seconds. Your name? Hi, I'm uh, Michael McFadden. I'm actually here on behalf of both Starbucks and MCG Architecture. Oh, great. Uh, I can answer one of your questions, uh, Commissioner Yates, uh, regarding the barrier for the patio seating area. There's 24 seats there. There will be a guardrail surrounding the entire thing. It won't just be a curb. Uh, and Commissioner Sanders regarding the sale of alcohol in a drive through I promise you we don't do that. Uh, they're very strict about their policies for that. All alcohol is sold in a clear container. Uh, so they'll open the bottle of wine or beer if it's beer. They put it into a clear cup, which allows them to monitor it more clearly. Uh, there's no chance of kids sneaking a drink if it's in a clear cup like that. Uh, and also I have uh, 
elevations that were given me given to me by the designing architect this morning. Uh, if, if you'd like to see them, I have them here. Sure. Uh, paper copies. No, that's just this is new. Um, and again, we're very early in this project, so the information we have available is still extremely limited, but I'd, I'd like to help wherever I can. Uh, I believe also the, the trash enclosure was brought up as a concern. We are constructing a new 10 foot by 20 foot enclosure to make sure that everything is enclosed. seeing a reduction in the uh, height of the building and in the architectural look of the building as well. Um, you're also, are you changing the, is that a patio that I'm seeing on the uh, south side? Uh, the entire existing sidewalk surrounding the building is actually not ADA compliant. Okay. Uh, we're going to be remodeling most of that to make it ADA compliant, including a new curb ramp and a switchback ramp, which is the only way that we can meet the grade difference on the east side of the building. Okay. Uh, the only patio is going to be on the west side of the building, as you see there, uh, with 24 seats on the inside of the drive through radius. The west side or the east west side? side? Is that, oh, the east side, the east I'm sorry. Side. I'm sorry. Okay. Is that shaded patio? It will be covered, yes. Okay. Are you going to reduce, we were talking about, I was talking about the landscaping and trying to get the driveway in and all that. Are you going to reduce part of that green landscaping that exists now? Do it you know? will be adjusted. I know it will be modified. So yeah, I, I picture, don't I know if the overall area is going to be reduced or not. You know, I'm talking about between the sidewalk and right. the existing crew. Okay. I just, I'm looking at the layout. I haven't seen any dimensions, so I haven't, we're not sure how, yeah, they how, haven't how wide out all they'll fit in. Yeah. We're looking yeah. forward to seeing this. Any other questions? And thank okay. you for coming, by the way. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, so item 12, um, Commissioner items or comments. Start with Commissioner Sanders. Yeah, um, just really happy to be here. So thank you for the, the welcome. And, um, nice full agenda for my first meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so we went over uh, a couple of things that I wanted to um, see if, if just what we need to do for future um, issues here. So on two issues, two items today, we've discussed the um, not enforcing a coverage of landscaping requirement. Is this something that we need to yeah, codify? Yes. We need to build yes, this in the this is something that will come to the commission. We'll make a decision so that we don't have this uh, conflict going on. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good to me. It will be an item, but not tonight. Yeah, not tonight, <laughs> obviously. Thank you. <laughs> okay. And then the other one was, um, Gary, it seemed like you were asking for kind of a resolution on what, what to do with uh, frontage displays for equipment vehicles. And, and I don't know if we need to have that as a future discussion item as well. I don't know. Or a case by case. But. Yeah, I mean, basically what I was asking is, do you want to, you know, the unfortunate, we can go with a, with a, because it's not really in the code one way or the other, so you can go with so, so, what I call more uh, selective or judgmental case. This case works for me, so I'm willing to do this. This case doesn't, uh, rather than a hard, you know, I, I think it's going to be hard to write a, a one of the reasons I think that it isn't in the code, it's hard to write that because there's all so many different kinds of display processes that it's hard to know whether you're talking about, you know, a person trying to put tables on a sidewalk or somebody who's building a real live, you know, trailer or tractor or something like that. That's a, mm. So it, I think uh, that's why we're asking. And it's not as though we have that process. I think the landscaping is one where we see every time we have something, whereas this one's more of a hit and miss kind of a very few people are Might be pretty running rare over my running in to say we want to do an, a display. Okay. In the case of Starbucks, they're going to have people display, but we're talking about that later. 
But well, that's, a, that, that's an example in the picnic area. I, I think to that question, it seems to me like it would be a, you know, more of a case-by-case case because uh, we've seen in the past where RV companies have come in and displayed, you know, at Walmart's parking lot or somebody else's parking lot. And, and, uh, and so there's going to be displays. If we're going to have a permanent business, we probably ought to look at it and see if it's compatible you know, with with the use surrounding it, if it's going to harm the neighbor or adjacent, uh, you know, businesses or something like that, uh, it, I'm afraid that if we if we turn around and we say this is the rule, that we'll end up regretting it. I always feel like that there has to be a slight wiggle um, that that we can move to allow commerce to to develop because if we make it black and white, um, I, I think we'd live to gr to regret it. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's all I had. So just thank you for having me. Thank you. Commissioner Yates? Yeah, I'm excited to see this, um, if I'm saying this right, this mental health facility come here. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Matthews. Uh, I'm excited to see this mental health facility to come here. Uh, we... In Ridgecrest, many of us may not know, but there's a lot of people uh, that are in dire needs of, of mental health, and the only facility they get that help at mostly is they have to go to Bakersfield. So uh, I just want to comment on that's a good thing to come to our city. Absolutely. I might comment also, uh, Commissioner, that that's, that the best part of that is it's also a grant-funded project. To a great extent, although I, I will compliment the hospital and their ability to buy the land and donate the land to the project is matching, if you will. And then there's a, a significant gr uh, grant money being proposed for the building of the facility. And so it's it's a great project, and staff is really trying to make it work as quickly and as due diligently as we can and make it a good project. So we're looking forward to seeing it as well. Okay. So we hope we didn't add too much burden to you. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Commissioner Solomon Raja Ratnam. I'm really excited to see so many projects. This shows we have economic development going on, so which is good for our community. Hope to see a lot more going on. And um, want to welcome Mr. Uh, Commissioner Sanders to the Planning Commission. And some new person is sitting there, so probably she should be introduced. Um, Go ahead. Well, I was going to hold off until okay. the yeah, staff, staff my staff stuff. Sorry, so. thank you. That's all. That's all. I, too, would like to welcome Commissioner Sanders. Our, our new commissioners uh, bring a great wealth to us. Uh, I uh, am especially grateful for uh, Commissioner Sanders' um, willingness to serve because he brings a lot to the table, a lot of city knowledge, and, and I would hate to lose that. I want to thank staff, uh, not only for their preparation, uh, Lauren, for your preparation, your willingness to work with us on this uh, medical facility. Uh, I, I think we've done some good work here today and, and still uh, provided um, safe harbor for the city. Um, I would like to thank our young ladies here, and I apologize for keeping you two and a half hours. I promise normally it's not that long. And, and the rest of you for your participation. So uh, thank you for, for doing that, and, and uh, your comments are, are appreciated. Uh, we're grateful for the, the uh, press to be here, to have the paper here and report what the, the Planning Commission does. So thank you so much. And we'll go to staff items at this point. Uh. Do you want to start and I'll well, follow? Real or? quickly, i uh, just going to give you an update on a few things. Uh, just want to let you know that our city bus garage, we issued the, the certificate of occupancy today. Uh, a few minor punch list items, but we are uh, substantially complete with the bus garage project. Okay. Our Church Street sewer line project uh, is, is moving along uh, on schedule. Uh, we do have the water district that's also in Church Street uh, replacing some valves, some uh, old abandoned lines and uh, services there, uh, working in conjunction with our contractor down in construction. Uh, we release, recently got our uh, designed wind speed 
changed here in our at Ridgecrest. We're now at 110. We were previously at 130 uh, for our design uh, wind speed requirements. Uh, this coming uh, uh, planning commission meeting in February, you're going to have a couple of land divisions before you. Uh, the uh, there's one at the corner of uh, China Lake Boulevard and Bowman. It's uh, on that. Uh, let's see, it'd be on the northwesterly corner, and you're going to have a uh, residential uh, track uh, proposed to you. It's uh, out off of uh, uh, Kendall and uh, westerly of uh, Del Rosa, out near the. Uh, Horton tract or the Stephen Hare tracks. So you'll have a couple of land divisions there you'll be looking at. I uh, want to remind you that there's an infrastructure meeting uh, that's on Thursday at 5 o'clock and also to let you know that we're currently under the new uh, 2016 building code. So far, so good. Uh, I don't think uh, all the, uh, uh, the uh, issues of uh, surfaced yet, whatever uh, onerous requirements there might be, uh, haven't really revealed themselves yet. The county's indicated that they'd like to give the new building code to settle in for a few months to see where the flaws might lie, and they intend to come over and give us a, a workshop for uh, the new uh, building code requirements. And that's uh, about all I can... Oh, uh, I do have a field review tomorrow with Caltrans for our a uh, CMAC project for the completion of Sunland between Bowman and uh, Dolphin, as well as a field review with Caltrans for our RSTP project, which is the uh, design and construction of the uh, east side of Downs between Ridgecrest Boulevard and Upjohn. Um, uh, so uh, quite a bit, quite a bit coming up here. One question: My understanding is Caltrans has taken a hard line on Warren Automotive Development. Uh, they are uh, looking at that very closely, and they are uh, uh, they have imposed some uh, conditions upon them for uh, median and drainage, and uh, also uh, some documents from the city uh, regarding uh, our environmental compliance process. Okay, so they're still looking at requiring them to do the median even past their property line. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Gary? Yes, uh, uh, first I'd, I'd like to uh, introduce to the Planning Commission uh, a new staff person. Uh, Heather, uh, I'm going to mispronounce it, Burlock is uh, going to be acting as our administrative uh, assistant and support person for the Planning Commission in the future. And I will tell you between her and Paul Leonard, who uh, is our, I'm sure you're aware of our planning tech, we could not have gotten this agenda out without their help and support. Uh, they did a great job, and we hope to have them continue to do so and be a partner in our efforts. And, of course, we thank our city clerk for stepping in and helping out uh, tonight to get the transition going. So that's been a, an important uh, part, and we look forward to that. We have a lot of agenda material to give you in the future. It's not going to be slow and we're going to be wondering what to talk about. There's going to be a lot. We have several, as, as, as uh, um, uh, our city engineer uh, mentioned, Lauren mentioned, we have two, uh, a parcel map and a track map coming and ready to come forward uh, for next meeting. And we've had inter, inter, inter discussions and discussions, beginning discussions on, on some of the uh, conditioning of those with the, with the uh, applicants engineering firm, Cornerstone. And uh, we're going to actually see some site plan reviews come forward and some other issues associated with uh, some new physical apartment contracts, uh, construction building. So we're going to be seeing some new, we're, we're hoping very, cross my finger, cross my leg, and hope, hope it doesn't change, but uh, we're going to be seeing some new apartment construction proposals, actual construction instead of track maps, which you've seen lots of. We have lots of approved and nothing gets built. This is the first uh, we're seeing where they're really going forward to looking at trying to uh, get construction going. So that's going to be a real help in that. I have a couple of items for administratively. Mr. Sanders mentioned the fact we're, we're looking for some direction on this landscaping water issue. I think it's a real dichotomy that has to be resolved. and and and. Um, um, you know, we, we're in a position where we really want to support the water 
use issue in the valley and the GSA. We've got a lot of efforts going on to trying to conserve that, and it seems a little bit uh, uh, difficult to have requiring landscaping when we, we're, we're trying to minimize landscaping, if you understand the difference. So that's a challenge you will have to discuss, and we look forward to that, and we should have that as an agenda item for, the, for at least the next meeting, if one sooner, um, I mean, at, at minimum. We also want to have, a staff would like to know, we have some um, committees and some uh, subcommittees, if you will, of the Planning Commission that were formed. Uh, some of which we believe uh, the current staff believes probably are are not really um, operating or have a necessity to be in existence. So we're kind of wondering whether or not we'd like to go through some of those sub. That's the things like the Bowman uh, 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 special district area of the um, the commercial district, or it's a special district, and then and then uh, some of the there's some others. The uh, media and art. There seems to be some um, uh, discussion as to what its scope is, whether it's uh, just China Lake and Ridgecrest. I mean, uh, China Lake and and uh, Ridgecrest Boulevard, or parts of Ridgecrest Boulevard, or whether it extends beyond that into all of the various uh, city city uh, medians. We want to make sure we're clear and the council's clear on what we're doing there because there's a Staff has got some dis some disagreements and, and what's included, what isn't. So we're going to go back. We're going to do a staff study. I mean, a minute study to see what that's at. But we'd like to have some comment back. So I, I, we need a we need a meeting, I guess, to discuss what whether we want to continue those and and if so, which ones we want to consider and uh, which you know, again assigning people for those committees or continuing those committee assignments. So we'd like to have a the staff would like to see you put that on the agenda as an item if possible to discuss those uh, perhaps at the next meeting as well if we have time because we're going to have at least two, two of those items for, for review, the track map and the, the other, and then I expect another site plan review so we might have four or five more items for you next meeting, plus these other issues. The final item that I'd like to discuss also is we'd like to, um, uh, all of you, fortunately, our, our council has picked, has chosen people for the Planning Commission with one exception that are not new to Planning Commissions. You've all been on Planning Commission before, years served, so you have some experience and in, 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 uh, information that you've gathered on that issue. But we'd like to, the staff would like to go through some basic some, forgive me if I call 101 issues associated with planning commission, your responsibilities, your conditions, and we, and then we also have some, some issues about, uh, you know, do we need to do um, public hearings for site plan review? When do we do staff reports, staff plans, site plan reviews? When do we do planning? So I'd like to have that, and we are, uh, I've, I've discussed that with our city manager, and he's willing to have our city attorney involved in that discussion so you can ask questions, which we rarely have here, and, and those kinds of things to uh, look at that. So, um, and so, yeah, so we're looking at those basic kinds of issues, and I'd like to have, see whether you have an interest in that and whether it would be something you want us to put on the agenda to have that discussion and have the city attorney here to help you answer questions. You may have questions about that. We have an issue associated with the, with conditions associated with this, with sometimes called the chicken ordinance or that kind of issue, which is another <laughs> issue with sitting back there that would provide us with some interesting things. We're going to have some other issues as the Parks Department looks at uh, the potential of closing the, 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 the pool, um, Penny, you know, our Penny Pool. There's going to be some, some back, backwash to that, and, you know, there's been some proposals for other kinds of developments in there, so you might want to have some input on that. So I think there's some generalized topics that we'd like to throw at you and have the plan and have the have the city attorney here to answer your questions and give you comments on that if that's something that you'd like to do. So we're looking for those agenda items, make sure that those agenda items are appropriate and uh, something you want to see rather than we're just spending time for you to discuss something you don't want to hear about in the first place. So those are the, the things that we're looking at for the future for staff. And one of the things that, that this particular, you know, forgive me, I'm taking this over as a staff and pushing this is to compress. One of the key things we're looking at is to try to help the development process in town and, and to allow our development developers and our businesses to be able to get their approvals and processes quicker. Uh, we're not interested in, in changing 
the conditions per se, the requirements they have, but to try to compress that time frame, process. the process in time frame in particular, because to development time is money. So um, we're going to be staff is trying to work at ways to compress that process as much as possible, and you may hear some of that with you to try to get that quicker and faster. Um, one of the reasons I mentioned the Starbucks is so we can compress that time as well. So those are examples of what we're trying to do and why we did the, the you heard about the, uh, we do intend to keep you informed of what we're doing and how we're doing it and get look for your advice for future issues and so on, but we're trying to make time speed up, if you will. So that's where we are and I appreciate your, look forward to all of you serving and, and I think we've got a great, frankly, on a personal basis, I think we've got a great planning commission and I appreciate all of your experience and participation in the process and look forward to uh, serving you as best we can. So thank, thank you. you. Any other comments from commission? Well, with that, then we will adjourn our meeting today at 844. Drag me under if I meet another girl like you. I will tell her, never want another girl like you.